Hey guys, it is this beginning part of the video that is always the most difficult for me. I've probably said hey guys like 40 times already. I have a lot of stuff in my brain that I'm trying to figure out how to sort through. I've got some things to talk about, I've got some tips to share, I have a couple techniques that I know that I want to use here. I'm also getting ready for something that I will tell you about in a second, but first I need to find a pillow that I can scream into because I'm going crazy. I'm not going to show you my outfit today. Then as soon as I say that, I'm going to start talking about my outfit. I'm wearing a pair of black cutoff uh, dress pants that I just wear as shorts. And then the shirt, this is all I'm going to show you. The shirt was the tie-dye design that I did myself using just black on a green shirt. And I kind of like how it turned out. All right, now I have two things that I'm going to start with. Sometime last year I put an alert in my phone. I was looking at something online and then I read something that made me feel super duper old and I thought, okay, set an alarm for next year, blah 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 blah. Basically, the movie Ever After with Drew Barrymore is 20 years old today. Holy crap. And when I read that, one, I felt super duper old and two, I thought, let's totally have an Ever After party. So, that's what I'm doing tonight. We're having friends over and we're going to be watching Ever After. I am make. I tried to, I wanted to make something. It's really warm so I just wanted to do just like a cold treat and I didn't really feel like booze. We're going to be doing, uh, okay, do you know the After 8 Mints? This is the only thing that I could think of. I mean there's Everclear. I was trying to think of what has a version of Ever After in the name and there's After 8 Mints. So we're doing Ever After 8 Mint Milkshakes. And that is what I'm getting ready for today. I'm not going to be doing anything super duper dramatic. I have, it's not my plan anyway. I have a couple gems that I'm going to be sticking on my forehead and sort of a nod to Drew Barrymore in the ball scene. But uh, that's really about it. Now, in that scene in the movie where Drew Barrymore comes out and she's got the butterfly wings and the glitter makeup and everything, so all super sparkly. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about like glowing metallic kind of skin because that's how she looks. But she's also 20 years younger. <laughs> I'm not doing that today. And I had an email that I received from someone who wanted to know, how do you mix a MAC pigment with a foundation to give a glowing finish to the foundation? That is what I'm also going to be doing today. So here's the thing about that lesson time. Now we get to learn something and then we're also going to chit chat. MAC pigments, they're very multi-purpose. You could mix them with a lot of different things. A lot of people don't use, they're not like the big thing anymore. So a lot of people might not be as familiar with how to work with them. They all have different finishes. Some are metallic, some are matte, some are frosty, some are glittery. Depending on the pigment that you choose, it will interact with the product that you're mixing it with in different ways if you're going to mix it with something. The person that I spoke with was using Max Naked Pigment with Studio Sculpt Foundation, these two together. The problem with this is that Naked Pigment doesn't have a lot of metallic shine to it. It's not matte, but it just doesn't have the same amount of like over the top frost that some of the other pigments have. There's a lot of different ways that you can work with products like this and it's for me it's almost different every time. I just kind of play around. I like taking a pigment, I mix it with a moisturizer to make an illuminating cream. I might put that on the top of foundation. I might then mix that with the foundation. I might put it under the foundation depending on the foundation that I'm using. Coverage level, is it powder, is it liquid, is it whatever. It's all about sort of experimenting and playing around. If I was going to be using a pigment like Naked that didn't have as much metallic sheen to it as say as an example um, white gold or kitchmas are both super frosty mix those with a moisturizer mix those with your foundation put it on you're gonna get a glowy foundation this I would mix just with moisturizer or some sort of a mixing medium I have max face and body mixing medium right here these two together those would give you sort of a slightly reflective foundation this is going to be your color or your coverage, so make sure that it matches your skin as best as possible. The other thing to consider, because we are talking about mixing a powder with a liquid product or cream product, it will change the consistency, it will alter the color, it will alter the coverage level. So if you take a little bit of a product like this and you mix it with a foundation that is otherwise sheer, you're going to get something that's thicker. You're adding a dry product to it, so it's going to create a more dense product that you're working with. And because they come in colors, keep in mind that when I mentioned white, gold, and kitchmas, these are both different colors and they're going to alter the color of your foundation. With pigments, it's really all about exploring and playing and finding something that works for you that you really like to do. 
that's generally the rule with life and generally the rule with makeup. You have to try it on yourself. You have to try it on your skin. You have to kind of see what's what ratios. Then you have to experiment. When I was in high school, I would put on Tales from the Crypt. I'd have a bowl of chips and salsa and a glass of orange juice and a bunch of makeup in front of me. That was like my snack. I don't know why. Throw some salami in there and I was like all over it and just experiment and try playing on your face and see what works and what do you like and what don't you like that's it it should be fun but that is of course if makeup is fun for you if it's not fun for you and you're actually trying to achieve a goal then it completely makes sense that you'd be asking for help going this is what i want what do i need to do to achieve this this isn't my hobby this isn't something that i'm doing because it's an expression of art or something that i'm really jiving on and that's completely okay too we're talking for so long. Let's get started doing some makeup. I don't have any moisturizer on, so I'm gonna be putting moisturizer on. Now I have the Super Goop, like SPF whatever in this MAC bottle because I bought the Super Goop sunscreen in like a gigantic container. And so I just decant, I had empty bottles of that MAC um, moisturizer because it was my favorite moisturizer ever. And I am so disappointed that they discontinued it. Now, because I was talking about it, I'm going to be taking a little bit of Naked and I'm going to mix it not with a moisturizer, but with Max Face and Body Mixing Medium. You can use a moisturizer, that's fine. Since face and body is so watery, I'm using roughly two to one in favor of the pigment. And the reason I mentioned playing and that it has to be fun for you, and if it's not, that's okay, is because Stuff like this really does take time and experimentation, and there's a lot of easier ways to get a glowy foundation. You just buy one, you use a highlighter, an illuminator, something like that, and that would do the trick. Much easier than mixing products together and doing a whole like mad science thing. All right, I have this mess all mixed up here. I'm gonna be going in with a paddle brush. And I mentioned this before, face and body is a little bit weird. And I know this is the mixing medium, but it's the same formula, so it's a little strange. This also allows that foundation to dry down a little because I think it is just so much easier to work with once it dries down. So I saw Ever After in theaters. I know exactly where I saw it. It was at the Rose Theater. I say that and now I'm confused. Is that what it's called? in Port Townsend, Washington. I was on vacation. I'm sure that I was with my family and we just wanted to go see a movie, so um, we checked it out one night. But I'm excited for, I haven't watched it in a long time, and I'm excited for like a little movie night. Fun fact, Drew Barrymore was probably my first like crush. We are roughly the same age, and the first thing that I remember her in, outside of E.T., because E.T. scared the crap out of me, was irreconcilable differences and i i liked that movie as i remember being however old i was as a kid and i just remember she was a girl that was about my age and i thought she was cute but as cute as she may be ever after is really about two things angelica houston and the prince of france's codpiece it's kind of funny though to think about it after all these years of like sort of growing up watching this person that you'd still watch them because she's on the Santa Clarita diet and I love that show on Netflix. And I, I watched that and I just like raced through the second season as soon as it came out. It's such a fun show. So right now I am just kind of buffing this in and I don't have anything on this brush. This is just a clean dry brush or it was when I started. Obviously, if you put powder on this, it's going to ruin the glowy effect, but this is a way to highlight. You can put a very glowy foundation on and then just powder where you don't want the shine. It's how I bronze. I put bronzer all over my face and then I put a foundation on in the spots where I wouldn't want bronzer. To me, it's less product sitting on the skin because instead of doing foundation, concealer, and then bronzer on top of it, I'm doing bronzer and then a little foundation or a little concealer. But again, you gotta like to play, and I like to play. Some people don't, and that's completely okay. Now, just to show you another technique, I'm gonna take a little bit of a more metallic pigment and mix it with something to use as a highlighter. So I have a little bit of Kitchmas, a little bit of white gold, which I'm apparently running very low on, and a little bit of tan. And because I want this to dry down, I'm also mixing this with face and body mixing medium. 
because if I use moisturizer, it might slide around a little bit on the skin. Now, because I like this brush, I'm just wiping off the paddle brush, and I'm going to use that where the light hits it so you can kind of see. Did I get really soft there? I started to talk very quietly. I don't do the tip of the nose, but I might do a little bit of the bridge of the nose. And there you can kind of see the shine that's coming off of that with the light. Anywhere that I don't want shine, I'm going to take a little bit of Max Blot Powder on a fluffy brush and just kind of put that in. All right, now we're watching a Drew Barrymore movie. I would be sad if I didn't use a flower product. So I'm going to be using one of the highlighters from the Galactic Glow palette. Um, I like this one down here. The dual chromes in this palette are nice. I think that the pink one is my favorite of the two because it doesn't have as much of a white base to it. So you can mix it with liners a little bit easier, which is, tends to be how I use a dual chrome highlighter. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this in strategic places. This is a very glowy look that I'm doing, but still natural. Now you'll notice what you didn't see me do in this look is concealer and that's because I don't care. I'm kind of just leaving the any sort of dark circles that I have. Um, I just like the look. I want this to be sort of bare faced glowy, which is also why I'm using clear gloss here instead of mascara. So if you got powder on your lashes, you don't want to use mascara. Use some sort of a clear gloss. I like Max Clear Gloss, which is just called gloss. A little bit on my fingers, and then just to kind of clean the lashes, add some shine and make them look nice. I'm gonna take a little bit of Benefit's Gimme Brow and just run it through the eyebrows very lightly. You know, I have two mirrors in front of me, and I've just noticed now that I keep switching from one to the other and I don't know why. This one is much harder to hold. So I have the smaller, I just keep setting the smaller one off to the side. All right, next up I'm gonna do lips and then we're gonna move on to gluing stuff to my face. Now, here's what I'm gonna do with the lips. I recently picked up Max like Lip Plumping Plenty of Pout, what is it called? Plumping Lip Gloss and one of the lipsticks. The lipstick is so swell. I really like this a lot so much and I want more of them really bad but I only got the two I want more of the same color though because it's a perfect color for me it's very similar to midi mauve but it has a sting to it that like kind of just it it doesn't okay lip plumpers I can't tell you what scientific paper I've read about it but in my experience they irritate the skin which causes blood to flow to the area which causes sort of a plumping kind of a look However, because your lips are stinging, this is my own thought, I also think that you're probably doing this more because your lips are kind of stinging. And so when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, whoa, look, my lips are so much fuller. Well, that's because they're burning and you're keeping them away from your mouth. However, we're not going to be using that. Not the uh, lipstick. The lipstick, it looks like midi mauve without any sort of shimmer. It's a little more opaque. That's fine. That's all you need to know. What I'm going to be using on the lips is probably a combination of spice and Subculture, which are two of my favorite liners. Spice's Tray 90s, so it seems appropriate. And I'm going to be using Max Clear Satin Finish Lip Mix. The reason I'm doing this, when I use liners on the lips, I'm not using it to prevent bleeding or feathering on myself. I'm just using the lip liners as a color to shade, contour, highlight, or just color all over. And it's easier if you have something on the lips already. I tend to, if I'm going to be using lip liner and lipstick, I put the lipstick on first and then I put the liner on because it just goes on so much smoother. If I'm just using the lip pencil as a lip color, this actually works really nice. Better than lip balm because this is essentially Max Lip Mix in clear satin. I hope they still make this. Is basically a clear satin finish MAC lipstick. So it doesn't have the same sort of emollient, moisturizing property of a lip balm that can sometimes cause a lip liner or a lipstick to kind of slide around a little. So once that's on, stop, put that mirror down. 
And while I'm doing this, talk amongst yourselves and tell me what's your favorite Drew Barrymore movie? <laughs> I liked her Reconcilable Differences. Um, Firestarter came out, I think, around the same time. And those are the things that I remember her in the most. But that's just because that's what I grew up watching. Well, it's, that's not true. Because, like, Charlie's Angels and all those other movies that came out. Okay, that is spice and subculture on the lips. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this gloss. Which has the strangest texture. And it's really cool. Unfortunately, the um, tip of the wand applicator... I don't know if you can see, is gigantic. And I've had this happen where I pulled this out of the tube and it pulls out the little plastic stopper and suddenly it's like everywhere. And that's the lips done. Let's start with a little bejeweled crown. Now, the gems that I have are bigger than the ones that Drew Barrymore had on in the movie, but that's because I need more attention. I could go with my uh, puck mark that I have from Chicken Pucks, which is dead center right here but I'm gonna go just above that. Now comes the tedious part that probably isn't going to show up very well on camera. Um, I'm using liquid latex. This is just a jar of liquid latex from Mehron and some tiny little Q-tips. Now these first ones are big enough that I can place them with my fingers and I know I'm gonna be putting one of them here. I might do two large and then two small. Do you ever notice that when you're trying to hold still, your hands start to shake? So we also just finished uh, Pose. And I don't have cable, so when I watch a show, I, I like with a show like that, I just buy it on Amazon and then I watch it. And um, I'm curious if any of you have watched it, are watching it, and what you think of it. I thought it was good. And it's not Paris is Burning. I was worried that it was going to be like, Ryan Murphy does Paris is Burning, but it's not. It definitely is a very character-driven show and not just about the ball, uh, which is quite cool. All right, now I'm going to be using smaller ones, and this is going to be a little bit more of a pain. So I'm going to start with these, and if they don't work, i put the lid on my latex. Then I'm going to um, go to one size bigger. I really liked uh, MJ Rodriguez, who played Blanca in the show. I thought she did an amazing job. Really good. She was probably my favorite part. And somebody needs to call her because she has assistant district attorney law and order written all over her. And I would <laughs> love to see her like on SBU. I think that's okay. That's a little sort of a, like, like, it's like a fairy garden. I'm liking it. And that is the look. I think that's pretty good. So that's just like fresh, clean, but overly metallic, kind of overly highlighted skin, at least for me, this is more than I would normally do. It's not certainly overly metallic. If you look at what's trendy, and it's clean and that there is no, I mean, there's no blush. There's no real color added to this. I don't have anything on the eyes. Clear lashes, nice and glossy. And then my little gems. I figured I would kind of look like a, a little woodland nymph or something in my tie-dye because it's too hot to get dressed up for anything else. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope that this was fun. I hope that you learned something that you could maybe use or perhaps let go of something that you're not going to worry about anymore. <laughs> and if you're going to be watching Ever After tonight, let me know. And I will think of you when I'm drinking my Ever After 8 mint milkshakes. I did at that time. It's been really hard to say. All right, guys, thanks so much. I appreciate it. I will see you soon.